Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be doing the bookmark landing page challenge from Frontend Mentor. So you can head over into frontendmentor.io forward slash challenges and then you can scroll all the way almost to the bottom. You're going to find this challenge and then you can just click on this card. And then I'm going to say restart so that I can get the access to the starter file. So restart. And then I'm just going to say download starter which is going to download the starter files for me. And so once it downloads the starter files, you can navigate into your downloads folder. And then you're going to get the bookmark landing page master here and i'm just going to right click and say extract here which is going to extract into a folder called bookmark landing page master which i'm going to right click and say open the code right there and so as that opens up i also want to open the design files inside here so the which one is it the desktop design yeah let's open up the desktop design and then we can take a look at the code that we have so we have the design files inside here we have the images that we're going to need in this project and then we have the getting now the index html the readme's as well as the style guide so because we're going to be building this in react and table css the first thing that i want to do is i'm going to open up my terminal using ctrl and j and then inside my terminal i'm going to go ahead and create a new react application and i'm going to say npx create react app and i'm going to call my application solution so once this runs then we are going to continue i'm just going to let it finish running because it's going to take just a bit of a while and then we can continue and you can see what we have in the design inside here we have our logo to the left we have our nav but to the right we have a single um not a single but a showcase here we have the features section and then we have tabs inside here so see these tabs we're going to be creating these tabs as well and then we have a section here which is a call to action and then we have like these are just they seem like transformed one on top of the other they are creating like stairs and then we have a frequently asked question section and then a call to action and then finally the photo on the bottom so that's how it looks on the desktop and then how it looks on the mobile is as follows so on the mobile we have our menu icon here we have our logo we have the hero we have the tabs section here okay we have this section which is just what a grid one stuck on top of the other we have the frequently asked questions here which we're going to create as well we have the email validation and then we have the footer on the bottom which is just stacked one on top of the other so it seems like a pretty simple design and it has some bits of functionality and that's that is the reason why i've chosen to do it in react because for me it's easier to do it in react than in, than in plain javascript and so i'm going to let this finish running and then we are going to continue okay so i've remembered to mute my phone and finally this has finished running so the next thing that i want to do is i want to install tailwind css so i'm going to first cd into my solutions folder so inside this folder which is our react application and then i'm going to go ahead and go into tailwind css docs so that i can install where is it here so that i can install tailwind css so let's go ahead into oh we're already here so into the framework guides and then into create react app and then let's go ahead and just copy this command and paste it in and let it run and then copy this command and let it run as well sometimes it takes a while to run and other times it is instantaneous i like i don't understand why perhaps it's just my internet or something or my computer is just a bit slower so go ahead and copy that second one and let it run so it creates our tailwind config file inside here and then let's copy this line copy and then inside our tailwind config.js we are going to paste it in inside our content so paste it inside here and then let's copy these three lines into our index.css so inside the source folder index.css let's paste it on top of that uh, okay something is wrong there we go and then we can remove this part we no longer need it and then we can remove the margin here and then for the font family we're going to change it once we get the font family from our style guide and then we can go ahead and run npm start 
so i'm going to close this and then i'm going to place this to my right and then okay you know what before i do that let's go ahead and actually get the fonts first because i always do that so inside our style guide markdown file we are going to scroll all the way to the bottom we can see that the font size on the uh, i think this is on larger screens is going to be 18 pixels but by default we're going to start with 16 pixels for mobile screens and we're going to be using a font called rubik with weights of 400 and 500 so let's just control and click to go to this link and then we can get the font called rubik so let me first remove all of this food styles of this of this for this is for another project and you're going to see this video in, in i think before this one you're going to see the video where we use that font family so we need the 400 and 500 so regular 400 and medium 500 let's grab those two fonts use the import tab and then let's copy this part copy and inside our index.css let's just paste it above this and then we're going to change this up so the body is going to use a font family called rubik and a fallback of sans serif in case this fails to load and then we're going to go ahead here and let me see let me do this we're going to add a media query because we know that the body copy on larger screens is going to be 18 pixels so let's specify a media query and let's say that for a min width of 1024 pixels meaning when the device width is greater than 20, 1024 pixels then i want i want the body to have a font family and you know what let me not say the body let me just say everything else so everything on the body not everything on the body but everything in our document so the the text the inputs the buttons and everything else is going to have a font size of 18 pixels so that this is going to apply but by default so this is not going to apply unless the device that you're viewing it on is greater than 10 to 4 pixels and 10 to 10 to 4 pixels is about laptop size screens so everything else is going to have a font family of 16 pixels so let's go ahead and save this and then let's go and inside our source folder let's delete the app css the app test js the logo report web vitals and the setup tests so we can delete them and then inside our index.js because we've deleted these files we can remove this declaration here and then we can also remove the import and then let's save it and then let's go ahead also and remove the app.js uh, not the app.js but the imports in the app.js and then let's remove this header as well and then we can remove this so that we only return a fragment so we only get to return a fragment so inside here we are going to have all our components so starting from the show keys or we are going to start with actually not we're going to start with the the header first of all and then we're going to go ahead and go into our showcase and then after the showcase i think we have the tabs let me just confirm this yes after the showcase we're going to have the tabs and what i'm going to do is because this is going to be uh quite a long video i mean i expect it to be about an hour or above then i'm going to do two videos for it so the first video is going to be for our header our showcase and for these tabs and then the next video we're going to continue and go ahead and build out the the remaining section just so that we can split the functionality and it's not too much in in one video so that's what i'm going to do and we're just going to start with that so we're going to build up these three components first of all which we don't have currently so if we try and save this file it's going to throw us an error even though we haven't started our server so the first thing that I'm going to do is inside my source folder, I'm going to right click and create a new folder called components. And then inside components, I'm going to create my header.js file. So header.js. And then I'm also going to create my showcase.js. And then I'm also going to create my tabs.js. Tabs.js. And then inside each of these three files, I'm just going to say RFC and then save it and then i'm going to go inside my header and say rfc once again and save it and then inside my showcase and say rfc and save it now rfc is a command that that is coming from an extension that is called es7 plus react redux react native snippets so when you install this extension then you're going to have access to some uh, shorthand command so that you don't have to keep on repeating the same block of code every time that you create a new file so you can go through this you can go through all the commands that they have but the most common ones are the like rfc and rafce and so on and so forth you know just some simple commands that you can easily easily just go through if you want okay so let's go ahead 
let's go back inside here and then let me see so inside our showcase we are going to need we're going to need by the way to do a few things because in order to create these tabs then i'm going to have to create a an array of objects and i'm thinking maybe i can do it in a separate file and then just import them and we can use the use state and i think that is going to be the much better solution so that is what we're going to do and therefore that would mean that we need to set up our array of objects but before i do that let's just build out our header and then our our showcase as well so inside my header we're going to have this i need to import the logo and the logo is outside our source folder so let's go inside our images and then let's grab the logo.svg where is it logo bookmark of this one so let's just copy this logo and then inside our source folder let's create a new folder called images and then paste in our logo so paste it in so logo bookmark.svg and then by the way i also need this icon i also need this icon and the icon should be called icon hamburger so let's also copy this and then let's paste it inside our images folder so paste it in and you know what now that i've removed them from here and here let me just delete them as well so delete them from from your main images folder that is outside the source folder so that we're going to have this in these two images inside our images which is inside our source folder and then what i'm going to do is now inside our header we are going to import these two images so i'm going to go ahead and say import logo from should be dot slash dot dot slash images forward slash logo bookmark bookmark.svg and then i also need to import the menu icon so import menu from dot, dot slash images forward slash icon dash hamburger.svg and then let's go ahead and return a fragment inside here and then let's return a header element so the header element and then inside our header element we're going to have a div and then this div is going to be our logo so we're going to be turning our logo inside here and then for the alt attribute in case the image fails to load then we're just going to turn the name of the landing page which is called bookmark and then below this div we're going to have a navbar and then inside this navbar obviously we're going to have our elements inside here our nav elements but then below this navbar we're going to have another div and then this div is going to be a button and then inside this button we're going to have an image which is going to be our menu icon which we have inside here and then now that we have our three elements inside here let's also go ahead and create and get the elements for our number so we're going to be turning an another list inside here and the first list item is going to be button so inside this button we are going to have some text that says let me check so features then pricing contact so features and then you know what because they're going to be the same so just copy this and paste it down once two more times so this is going to say pricing and then this is going to say contact and then we have login so this fourth one is going to say login login and then below below this ul we're going to have another ul which has two list items so l i times two and these are going to be images so we're going to be getting the facebook icon as well as the twitter icon inside here and i don't know whether they are provided here icon facebook and twitter so let's copy these two so copy and then let's paste them inside here as well so paste them in and then back inside our header let's go ahead and we're going to be getting the facebook icon here and then inside here we're also going to get the twitter icon like so and then let's remember to import them as well so just copy this down two more times change this to facebook oops this one change this to facebook and then change this to twitter and then remember to change this to icon facebook and then change this to icon twitter and there we go so i can save this and then let's go ahead and disable this too so we'll make this into comments and then let's import our header so just go ahead and click here and say control space bar which is going to give you the option to auto import it on top and then save it and then we can go ahead and say npm run start make sure that you're in your solution folder otherwise um, npm start will is not going to work so let's go ahead and run this and then as it continues to run then we can begin to style this out and we're going to style it out in the following way and you know what i'm thinking i'm thinking of rendering two navbars 
but we are going to be toggling them on whether it is the mobile screen or the desktop screen just because I don't want to deal with styling the numbers and playing around with CSS or all, all that much. So what I'm going to do is this. Let's just begin by getting the header. First of all, let's go ahead and give this a class name of flex and item center and then justify between and then let's give it a padding all round of eight. And then inside this number, because this is the mobile number, and how we want it to look, by the way, how we want it to look is the following. So you want them to just like have a drop down list, so one on top of the other. And we're going to do this because uh, we have what? This is the features. So they are stacked one, two, three, four. And then this one is on the bottom. Oh, wait a minute. This logo is different. This logo is different from the one on the. Um, by that is, that is uh what am i saying english yeah see this is a darker logo when the number is closed so when the number is open it shows a different logo hmm okay so we're going to have to do a bit of bit of uh thinking here so we don't have the lighter logo we don't have the lighter the whiter logo really so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of their logo bookmark. So copy this logo and then inside the images folder, paste it in so that we're going to have logo bookmark copy. But I'm going to rename this into logo bookmark light so that we are going to do this. I'm going to get the logo bookmark, the lighter one, which is this one. So copy this down and change this into logo light and then change this into logo bookmark dash light dot SVG. And then this is confusing me a bit. You know what? Let me make sure that this open first. Let's place it to the right and then place this to the left. This is zoomed out. Yes, it's zoomed out. There we go. So, you know what? Let me save this first of all so that we just make sure that everything is working as we expect it to work by default. And then, you know what? Navbar here is going to be hidden by default. So I don't want to be able to see the number, but then when I click on this, then we're going to change this class to be a block element. So by default, let's just have this and then let's build out these other sections. And then we're going to deal with the number later because I don't want to deal with it currently. So let's go ahead and build our showcase and then we can continue. So inside our showcase, we're going to have another image here, which should be illustration, no, illustration hero. So copy this. And we are going to paste it. Uh, wait a minute. Illustration hero. We have two images here, right? There's this one and then there's this one on the background. Illustration hero. I don't think we are, we are given the background image. So let's just copy this. And then let's go ahead into our images folder here and paste it in. And then let's go ahead into our showcase.js. Let's go ahead and say import hero from dot slash images or slash illustration dash hero dot svg. And then let's go ahead and render a fragment and then let's return a section first of all. And then inside this section, we're going to have two articles. So the first article is going to be our image, our illustration image. So hero. And then the second article is going to be our h1 with our paragraph. So we're going to return an h1 that says a simple bookmark manager. A simple, is it capitalized? Yes, it is a simple bookmark manager. And then we're going to have a paragraph here. And you know what? We have an index.html file inside here. So you can just go ahead and copy the text instead of typing it out. So copy and paste it here. And then below this, we're going to have a ul which is going to have two list items. And then these list items are going to be buttons. So this first button, which is blue, and then the second button, which is just a bit gray. So we're going to go ahead here and say, return a button and say, get it, get it on Firefox and Chrome. And then the second one is going to have a button that says, get it on Firefox. There we go. So that is our section, our showcase. So let's go ahead and save it and then let's go ahead and see what is going to be turned. Nothing because we disabled it inside here. 
so let's remove this comment and then let's just comment out the tabs and you can easily comment out by the way just saying control and forward slash just like so it's very simple and then let's go ahead and import our show keys so import show keys and then we should be able to see something here and there we go so you can see that we have our illustration hero but we don't have the background blue image and the background blue image should be actually you know what we are not provided with it we are not provided with it so we are going to have to create our own using css and that is going to be a bit of a pain but we are going to do it anyway so inside this section let's give this a class name of padding on the x of 8 and padding on the y of 20 so push it downwards and inwards and then let's go inside this h1 give this a class name i do not uh because i want all headings to have the same color let me declare it inside my index.css file so inside my index.css let me go ahead below the body and something is in my eye so below the body let's go ahead and declare for the h1 the h2s the h3s and the h4s i don't think we're going to use anything other further than an h4 i'm going to use a tailing directive called at apply and i'm going to say at apply a text of slate-800 let me see how that looks i think that is okay and then we can say font bold as well to make it bold we can use that one and then now back inside our showcase which should be here we are going to go ahead and increase the font size of this so let's go ahead and say text dash 4xl and margin bottom of 8 to push away from the paragraph and then inside this parent article we're going to give this a class name of text dash center so that the text is going to be centered all the text inside the article is going to be centered and then you know what let me say margin on the y of 8 so that it also pushes away from this image just a bit there we go and then let's go ahead inside this paragraph and you know what the paragraph all paragraphs in fact are just a bit grayed out so once again i'm going to declare it inside my index.css and say for all my paragraphs we are going to apply a text of slate dash 600 and then let me also go ahead and apply a line height here of 1.8 let me see how that looks that looks okay and let's go ahead back inside our paragraph inside here and you know what there's nothing else that we need to do we can go inside our ul and give this a class name of margin top of 8 or you know what of 10 to push away from the paragraph and then now inside our ul we're going to say give this a class of flex and items dash center and justify dash center and then just in case they reach the ends of the screen then i want them to automatically go into the next line instead of creating an overflow on the bottom so we're going to do that by saying flex wrap flex wrap here and then let's also give them a gap of about four to separate out the buttons and then let's tear out this this button so this first button is going to have a class name of bg dash indigo dash 600 let me see how that looks let's try 700 well let's use 700 okay not this color doesn't match with this blue color so let's just use the color that we are provided with so inside our style guide we should have a blue color here and it should be very dark blue so let's copy this and then let's go ahead inside our where is it index.css i can't find it so inside our index.css we are going to have create we are going to create a class so inside our index.css we're going to create a class called btn blue and btn blue is going to have a background color of this that we have just copied actually that is not even the correct one that is not the correct color the correct color should be a soft blue copy and i can't find my index.css file let's paste it inside here that should be the correct one and then we can go back into our showcase and then we are going to give this button a class of btn dash blue which is going to apply the correct blue color there we go and then we're going to change the text here to white and give it a padding on the y of two and a padding on the x of four with a rounded border with a very slight box shadow let's save it let's see how it looks okay is the font bold the font doesn't seem to be bold and then let me see does this does it have a, a box shadow shadow does the class of shadow not exist hmm interesting 
Oh, it does exist, but it's barely visible. It's barely visible. And then what we're going to do now is inside this button, we're going to give this button a class name of BG Slate 100. And then text dash gray dash, not gray, but slate dash 800. And then padding on the y of two, padding on the x of four with a rounded border and a shadow of large as well. There we go. So this is going to be our button. And then let's go ahead and do this. Let me say that when you hover over the button, we're going to have an opacity of 75. Opacity dash 75. And then copy this class and then just paste it here as well. So that when you hover over it, then the button gets a bit uh, slightly opaque so that you can see that we are hovering over it. And that is our showcase on mobile. So what we need to do now is just scale it up. So we're going to scale it up right around. Oh, you see, this is a problem. See how this is a problem? I don't want the image to be offset to the left. So in order to place it to the center always, what I can do is I can go inside this image and give this a class name of width dash full. And what's, what it's going to do is it's going to take up 100% of, uh, of the width always. So that we're going to have this. And then from about tablet size screens, so I think right around here, what I want to do is I want to begin to, you know, not even tablet size screens. Let me begin at about laptop size screens. Then we want to display the image on the left, sorry, the image on the right, and then the text on the left. So inside our section, inside here, we're going to say that from, for large screens, which is 10 to 24 pixels when you're using Tailwind, then we are going to say display this as a grid and then we're going to have grid columns to be two with a gap of 16 and see how this is going to be a problem let me save this and then you're going to see you're going to see that now the text is on the right but the image is on the left so what is happening is the image is on the left because that is going to be the that is the first article that we have and then the second article is going to be the text so we can fix it by doing this we can fix it by grabbing this article and placing it on the bottom of this article. So we paste it below this. Now that is going to fix it on large screens, but on smaller screens, we're going to have an issue. See how there's an issue? So in order to fix this, once again, you can use Flexbox inside here and you can say that display this as a flex. And then because it's on mobile screens, first of all, then we're going to say flex column reverse, meaning bring the, bring the last item to be first and then bring the first at the end to be last. And then make sure that this is applied on large screens and that this is also applied on large screens. Otherwise, they are going to take up the classes of the Flexbox. So let's go ahead and save this and you're going to see that now it is going to be proper on mobile. And then even on desktop, when we scale this up right around here, then you can see that now it starts to display properly. And then now what we need to do is we need this text to go to the left. So inside our article, Inside here, what we're going to say that for large screens, then the text should go back to the left. And what we're going to see is it's going to go back to the left. And then what we're going to do is because we also need this to come to the left, then inside this UL, right inside here, we're going to say that for large screens, then we're going to say justify. Is it justify start or what? Okay, yeah, it is justify start. So we're going to have this. And then now let's take a look at the mobile design to make sure that we are limiting this correctly. So here, so we need to limit our header, which we have not yet dealt with. And we also need to deal to limit this. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to apply a max width on the section. So inside our section here, we're going to say that apply a max width of about 8XL. I think 8XL exists. And then in order to offset everything to the center, then we're going to say MX Auto, which is going to apply an equal margin on the left and right, which is going to push everything to the center. So let's save this and then let's see what you have. And wait a minute, does it? It hasn't reloaded. Why haven't you reloaded? Reload, come on. Um, am I doing it on the wrong place or what? Max or, or 8XL doesn't exist. That's the problem. There we go. So 8XL doesn't exist. So once we have a max width of 7XL, you can see that everything is now offset to the center. And that is a much better looking. So now what we need to do is we need this to come downwards and then we need to increase the size of this H1. 
So what we're going to do is inside this h1, we're going to say that for large screen, then increase the text to 6xl. How does that look? Okay. And then inside here, so let me say about, where is it? This is grid, grid. Let me also say that after this, for large screens, then we're going to say place item center. So place item center, which is going to move them down as just a bit. And we're going to have that. And then you know what? Let me see how it looks. Okay, that does look okay. Now we need to create this background thing here. So for the background, we are going to do the following. I'm going to have, let me see. And for this one, I'm, I'm going to use uh, plain CSS because I think it's, it's going to be much easier because Tailwind kind of limits you to how far um, how far of widths and heights that you can apply. So what I'm going to do is, hmm, inside this second article, I'm going to have a div or with a class of BG, just like that, and then save it. And then inside my index.css, I'm going to go below this and I'm going to say that for the class of BG, I want a height of 300 pixels and I want a width of, let me say, huh, how is this going to work? Let me say a width of 500 pixels and then I want a background color of HSL, so this very same blue color. Let me save it and we should see something on the screen. So there we go. And then now what I want to do is I want this to be positioned absolute. So let me go on top of this. Let me say position this. Oh my God, I can't type. Position this as absolute. And then let's bring it to the right by zero. Let me see where it goes. There we go. And then what I want to do is I want to bring it to the bottom by zero as well, so that it's always going to be on the bottom. Now you can see that it's kind of a problem because I don't want it to be here. Instead, I want it to be inside here. So what I'm going to do is inside my showcase, I'm going to go inside this article and give this article a class name of relative, relative, so that anything else that is positioned inside this article is going to position to be positioned relative to the parent article. So let's go ahead and save it and it should come there. You can see that now it's almost looking nice. And then here, I'm going to go back into my index.css and then change this width to 100% just to see what it's going to do. Uh, and it does that. And then I need it to go behind the image. So I'm going to give it a Z index. And you know what? This should be. Um, let me go below this to give it a Z index of minus one. We should bring it behind. There we go. And then we need it to have a rounded border on the top left actually do we need on the top left because it is behind the image so we don't technically see it but we need it on the top on the bottom left so let me go ahead and do this let me go ahead and give this a border radius border border radius oh my god border radius of let me say um 200 pixels on the top left zero on the top right zero on the top uh, on the bottom right and 200 pixels on the bottom left. There we go. And then now what I need this, what I need to do here is, and by the the reason why it's moved here is because um, we have applied a max width on it. That's why it's here and it's kind of annoying. It is kind of annoying. And let me see what happens if I change this into 120% that happens and then now i can bring it to the right by minus 20 percent what happens then okay so we're just going to play around with this so take this to minus 40 percent and then give this a width of i know what the width of 120 percent can remain so that now that goes there but you can see that now it introduces a horizontal scroll bar right so we want to get rid of this horizontal scroll bar so what i'm going to do is inside here so in fact, right below this, what we're going to do is I'm going to say that for 10 to 4 pixels, so right below this, then we want the overflow on the X axis, meaning the overflow on the bottom here. We want it to be hidden. So overflow on the X, set this to hidden and this should disappear. OK, so that is a problem. See, now it, it, it adds a, an overflow to everything. <laughs> now we don't want that to happen. So this should be therefore applied on the body. So apply it on the body and that should fix it. There we go. 
So we no longer have the horizontal scroll bar, but you can see that we do have this, uh, our background thing inside here, and you can see that it's working correctly on large screens. So there we go, that does look nice. And I've just realized that I was zoomed out. <laughs> I was zoomed up. So let's go ahead and limit our header as well. So inside the header, we can just go here and say give this a max width of 7xl with an mx of auto, which is going to limit it as well right around there. And then let's go ahead and build out our feature section next. And so for our feature section, we are going to do the following. Let's go ahead and you know what? I called it tabs. So for the tabs section, we're going to go ahead and remove this. And then what we're going to do is let me take a look at the design we have an h2 so let me do this we're going to do this we're going to have an article which is going to house this h2 and the paragraph so we're going to have a section first of all which is going to be the parent of everything and this section this section is the one that we're going to limit so I'll give this a class name of max with dash 7 xl with an mx of auto with a padding on the x axis of 8 so that on small screens the content doesn't push all the way to the edge instead they are pushed inwards and then i'm going to say padding on the y of 20 even though we already have a padding on the y here we already have a padding here and i should probably remove it but i'm just i just want to see how it's going to look first and then inside here we're going to get our first article and then this first article is going to be an issue that says features and then below this h2 we're going to have a paragraph that says let's go inside our index.html so that we can just copy and paste so features and then it should say this one so copy and paste it inside here and then let's save it and then inside our app.js let's remember to enable this and then control spacebar oops control spacebar no suggestions okay let's just copy it down let's import it manually so tabs and then let's save it and we should be able to see tabs inside here so we have our h2 and then we have our paragraph let's make the mobile version first so let's go ahead and bring this to the center let's go inside let me close this and close this so let's go inside this h2 give this a class name class name of text dash 2xl and then let's go inside this article and then give this a class name of text dash center so that everything pushes inwards and then you know this looks a bit small so let me say text 3xl and then let me say margin bottom of eight, push it from the paragraph. And then let's go below this article. Now below this article, we're going to do the following. Since we are going to be creating tabs for this, we're going to need to create an array of objects so that we can like get the data for each section, so to say. So we are going to do this. I'm going to go ahead right on top of this and I'm going to create a, an array of objects. So I'm going to say const data is equal to this and I'm going to give this an ID of one. And then I'm going to say that the title for this is going to be, what is it? Bookmark in one click. So let me go ahead and say bookmark in one click. And then the description for this, we are going to be inside our index HTML and then let's say bookmark in one click. This is going to be the description, so copy. And paste it here and remove this space so that we don't have this error and then what we're going to do next is we also need to get the the button that says more info i think it says more info for all of them let me just confirm more info more info more info okay so it says more info for all of them so the button here you know let me say link the link here is going to say more info is it capitalized yes it is and then now what i'm going to say is that for the button now on top now the button is going to be this one so the button here on top is going to be this one and this one and this one so the button here is going to say simple simple what bookmarking and then we're going to do the same for the remaining three of them so let's just copy from here add a comma and then copy so copy and paste it one and two change this to id number two change this to id number three change this title into what is it should be inside our index html intelligent search so copy and paste change the description to this copy and paste here remove this space and then the button the link is going to say more info and the button is going to say 
what is it speedy searching so speedy searching here speedy searching and then the third one is going to say share your bookmarks for the title so for the title here share your bookmarks index html copy this is going to be our description so paste it inside here and then remove this space oops don't delete that text so remove the space that we don't have that error the link is going to say more info once again and the button the button is going to say what easy sharing so easy sharing and then now once we have this then we need to import use state from react so import use states so that we can manage our state values and then inside our function component here i'm going to create my state value and i'm going to call this let me just call this tabs is equal to use state and then by default i want to pass in the data that we have so it's going to be populated with all this data and the reason why i'm not using our function here is because we are i don't think we're going to need our function anywhere so that's why i've not declared it so that we don't have that error anyway and then i'm going to create a value here uh, another state value called value and set value and then i'm going to initialize this to use state zero so by default meaning the zero here means that by default we want to be able to only display this first one and then we are going to be toggling them depending on the index that they have so this is going to be index zero and then one and then two so we're going to be able to toggle that and then now what i want to do is the following i'm going to go ahead inside let me see inside this div and i'm going to create a ul with three list items so li times three and then inside li times three i also want to have buttons and then now inside this buttons and you know what i'm actually doing this wrong so let me remove this inside this ul what i want to do is i want to be able to map over my data of the tabs so inside the tabs data so i'm going to say tabs dot map and then for every let me say that for every tab that i get back then i want to return a list item with a key of let me say tab dot id and then inside this list item i'm going to be returning a button element and then this button element is going to say tab dot button so tab dot button is going to be this one and then now once i save this then we should be able to see something on the screen so simple bookmarking and speedy searching and easy sharing so we're able to see these three on the screen so that is looking okay and then now what we need to do is we need to display this bigger image and the text here as as the default one so what i'm going to do once again is i'm going to go outside of this ul and then i'm going to have an article and then now what we need to do is we we are not going to map over the data inside here because if we map over it then it's going to display everything all at once but we don't want to display everything all at once we only want to display the respective one depending on the tab that we've clicked on here so what we're going to do is we are going to extract a few values inside here and i'm going to say we're going to destructure the we want the image oh wait a minute i didn't get the image we haven't passed in the images inside here so we are going to need to do that so we're going to get the image we want to get the title because the title is here and then we want to get the description and then we also want to get the link and then these are going to be equal in two tabs depending on the value that we have and then just to show you what we're going to do is let me remove this image first because it's going to give us an error because we haven't um, declared it inside our array of objects so if i go inside here inside this article and not let me use a div because it's going to be easier and i want to use a div inside here so that now inside here inside the div then i can display an article and then this inside this article i'm going to have my first image obviously which is not going to have anything and then i'm going to have another article and then this other article is going to have an h2 that says should i use an h2 yeah this one and this one are the same size so h2 that says um should be the title and the title is going to be here and then below this h2 we're going to have a paragraph that says description and then below this paragraph we're going to have a button and then this button is going to say link that should be correct and then i'm going to go ahead and save this and then now we should be able to see the first image i mean not the first image but the first uh, information the first piece of information that we have in our array of objects now see how this is working correctly 
what is going to happen is if I change this into one, then we should be able to see the second one. And if I change this into two, then we should be able to see the third one. So our functionality is technically working, but you know, no one is going to go into your code to change this manually in order to see everything else. So what we're going to need to do therefore is we're going to need to add a click event on these buttons. But before we add the click event, then let's go ahead and let me add our images. So below this, I'm going to add an image and this image is going to become from dot slash images forward slash. Let me check the name of this should be um, illustration features tab one. So illustration features tab dash one dot SVG. And then you know what, let me just copy this part up to here and then paste it here, change this to tab two and then copy and paste it here and then change this to tab three. And then now these images are still not going to show because the images folder here is outside of our, our workspace. So what we need to do therefore is we're going to copy these three images and now let me just cut them out. And then inside our public folder, now no, no longer inside our source folder, but inside our public folder, we're going to create a new folder called images and then we're going to paste them in. And I don't know why it does that, but for some reason, uh, when you are getting an array of objects inside here, then uh, React isn't able to serve them unless they are from the public folder. So that's why I've placed them inside the public folder. So that now I can go ahead and destructure the image here. And then if I render the image now, we should be able to see our first image. So go ahead and reload. And then let's see, and you can see that now we have our first image. And if I change the value here into two, then we should be able to see our third image. So you can see that the functionality is working technically. So let's go ahead and style this out to look just a bit better before we add the functionality and before we end the video actually. So inside this UL, I'm going to give this a class name of flex. And let me say, should I say item center? Let me say justify center. And then let me say flex column so that they are stacked one on top of the other. And what I should probably say item center as well anyway. So that they are moved to the center. Uh, wait a minute, let me try and say text center. Let me see. Yeah, that should still work. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a margin on the top of 10 to push it away from this button. Uh, from the text, sorry, not from the button. And you know what, let me say margin on the Y instead of margin on the top so that it applies margin on the top and bottom. And then for this image here, I'm going to give this a class name of block and MX auto and width dash four. So that it's always going to be centered and it's always going to take up 100% of the screen. And then back inside the, let me see, let me see, inside here, let me give this a gap wait a minute does it have a gap even it doesn't have a gap it does not have a gap where's the mobile see how it doesn't have a gap instead they're separated by like borders on the top and bottom so what we're going to do here is we're going to remove this gap and then inside the nah, should i do it inside the list item let me do it inside the button because the button is the one that i want to be clickable and you know what the list item entirely should be clickable so let me give this a class name of border border and border dash y so border on the y i know what it should be border on the y by default and then i'm going to say border dash slate dash 200 or well, let me say 400 let me see how that looks and we should be able to see that hmm. you know what instead of saying border on the y so you can see that you can see how this has a double border so instead of saying border on the Y here, I should say border on the top. But this is not going to apply on the last one. And I also want the last one to, to, up, to have a border on the bottom. So how do I do that in Tailwind? Uh, there should be a way. Is it, is it last child? There, there is first. There is a class called first child. Or oh, oh, which, which one is it? First so it's class of first, so I should be able to say last as well. Is it last? Yes, last should be it. And I should say border dash bottom. And should that apply? There we go, there we go. Fantastic. And then let's also have a padding on the Y of two to separate them out just a bit so that we have a bit of space. Let me say padding on the Y of three. 
mm, that should be fine and then you know what uh this is actually wrong but let me show you why it's wrong first of all uh see how the active the active tab has a border on the bottom here on the bottom of red what we are going to do here is we're going to have a class name here and then this class name is going to be dynamic so we're going to place it inside curly brackets and then we are going to check the following we are going to be checking for whether the index of the button that we've clicked on is equal to the value of our state value inside here so the, this value and if they are equal so if this is true double ampersand then we are going to apply a border of uh, a border on the bottom and then we're going to apply a border on the bottom of red dash let me say about 400 and what this should be border bottom dash too so that it's just a bit thicker and then you know what before i save this then we should also destructure this index from our map here so once we map over it then you can also get the index so the index of the button that I've clicked on when it is equal to the value then we want to these classes to apply so let me save this and let me see whether it's going to work and there we go so you can see how we are on this tab currently and then it has this underline now the reason why there's this space inside here is because of this padding of three so if i remove it look at this then the uh the the padding the space is no longer there so what i'm going to do now is i want the padding to be applied inside the button so just cut this out and then place in your back ticks and then place in your ampersand and then your curly brackets once again and then paste it in and then outside of the dollar sign here i'm going to say padding on the y of three so this padding on the y of three is going to apply to every button but this these classes inside here are only going to apply when the index is equal to the value meaning on the specific tab now if i change this into one then this second one should get the border so you can see how that works it's working correctly and now let's go ahead and also style this out for mobile how does this look so this is to the center this is also to the center let's style this out so inside this article give this a class name and we're going to give this a class name of text dash center and then let me go inside this h2 give this a class name of text dash 3xl and margin bottom of 8 and then let me see save it not let me see margin y i keep on forgetting to add margin on the top here and then inside this button this button should take the same classes as our button on top so let me just go ahead into the show keys and then let's copy the classes on this button so copy these classes and then inside our tabs then we can paste them inside here and save it there we go and then you know what let me go inside this paragraph and give this a margin on the bottom of 10 to push away from this button and there we go so now that we have that working then we should add the functionality for the click events on this so what we're going to do is we are going to go inside our buttons inside here and we're going to have an on click event so what we want to happen on this button when we click on it is that we want to change the value of our state value here and you have seen that every time that you change this value then the the image and the text inside here also changes so we want to be able to change this value and set it equal to the index of the button that we click on so we're going to pass in an inline function inside here and we're going to say set value into the index and just as simple as that when you save this and I try to click on this you can see that now this changes and when I click on this it also changes and when I click on this it also changes now what we need to do is I need to change this back to zero so that it shows the proper image by default and then we just need to scale this up and then I'm going to end the video there so that we can create a second part which is going to have the rest of the functionality so what I'm going to do now is inside our UL I'm going to say that for let me say for medium screens which are tablets then I'm going to change the flex into row we should now align this in row form and then now we need to remove the border on the top <laughs> so inside here we're going to say for for, uh, for medium screens that we want the border top to be none I think that should be it uh, is it border border top or is it border top zero is it border top zero there we go okay okay that's looking okay 
and then what we need to do is huh, we need to remove this class as well so copy this and say that for medium screens then the last border should be zero as well so that it won't it removes it and then what we need to do is for medium screens we're going to say border on the bottom and then for medium screens hmm you know what border top zero and then medium screens border bottom this should still apply so let me save this and let me see okay so it applies except on this one hmm so i i still need this to be inside here oh my god responsiveness there we go there we go and then now what you need to do is i need to add padding on the on the x axis so that these push away from one another so i think it should be here let's say for medium screens let's say padding on the x of three let me see separate them out let me say padding on the x of six separate them out even further that's looking okay and i just realized that i forgot to change the colors of the buttons so inside our index.css inside our paragraphs not not inside of our paragraphs but let's just copy this line and let's say that for all our buttons to have the same color here that should be okay it doesn't affect this one on the top looking nice looking nice and then now what you need to do is we need to limit this so we are going to go inside our tabs and then what we need to do is inside this div which has our image and our text then we're going to give this a class name and say that for large screens then i want this to be a grid and then for large screens i want this to have grid columns too and then for large screens i want to have a gap of 16. so that now they're going to this is going to be placed to the left and then this is going to be placed to the right and then let me say let me say padding on the y of 10. not not padding on the y but padding on the top because i don't know how to have padding on the bottom here yet okay you know what i cannot make this full screen so that we can work on it properly and then i need this to move downwards so we're going to say that for large screens then place items center items dash center move it downwards and then um i need this to be aligned to the left so inside here we're going to say that for large screens then text dash left which is going to be aligned to the left now and then back inside this div we need this to be limited so give this a max width of 7xl and an mx of auto which is going to limit it does it limit it okay it does it does okay and then now what we need to do let me see let me see how does it look like this image this image does look just a bit bigger right i mean it does look a bit bigger and the reason why it is smaller here is because of place item center this one so if i remove this then the image should become bigger again and then what is the class to move items to the center is it place content center so let me say place content what is it oh wait a minute wait a minute hmm let me do this let's also increase the size of this h2 let's go here and say that for last one then the text should be 4xl and then copy this and then let's also do it on the above h2 here so just make it a bit bigger and then we need to limit this paragraph of this one so give this a class name and say that for large screens then the width should be a half let me see how that is mm, let me say it's, it's a bit smaller it's a bit smaller so let me say it should be a third a third okay mm. and then let's say for large screens then mx auto we should bring it back to the center and now that does this now looks a bit squeezed i don't like this this one word on the bottom so let me just make it a half or you know what instead of making it a percentage width then let me say width of let me say about 72 too small 96 96 is the maximum you know what let me just work with 96 anyways so that now we're going to have this we are going to have this hmm <laughs> what's bothering me is still this image that is what is bothering me should i use flexbox let me try and use flexbox here 
on this div let me try and use flexbox here so let me say the gap can remain so let me say that color screens then flex and then item center let me see what happens should be brought here and then justify dash center okay and then inside this article give this a class name and say that for large screens the flex should be one so that it takes up 50 percent and then copy this okay not copy this class only and paste it here should be fixed there we go flex does work much better flex works much better so that now this is going to be centered as well okay and then now what we need to do is add this background blue image here and what we're going to do is i'm going to do something similar to where i uh, to what i did in the showcase and in the showcase we added a div with a class of bg here right inside this image inside the article that has the image so i'm going to do something similar inside the tabs i'm going to create a div with a class of bg dash left 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 and then inside this article i'm going to give this a class of relative relative Oh, you know what I just realized? I just realized that I did not test this out on mobile screens. And I'm just realizing that it has an overflow. See how it has, it has an overflow because of this. I have just realized. <laughs> that is going to be an issue. We are going to fix it, don't worry. So what I'm going to do is this. Uh, and you would think that having an overflow on the X, uh, on the body is going to fix it on mobile, but for some reason it doesn't. I mean, so far, with with what I've built so far, like uh, having an overflow on the X to be hidden on mobile doesn't fix it the way it does on, on desktop. I, I have no idea why. But let's first add in the background image that we have inside here. So we're going to copy these classes, copy, and we're going to paste them inside here. And then I'm going to change the right here to say left. And you know what? I'm just going to set it to zero for now, and the width is going to be 100% by default and change this into bg dash left so that now the border radius now is going to be zero on the top left and then 200 pixels on the top right and then 200 pixels on the bottom uh, right and then zero on the bottom left save this and then let's see what we have and see how it's right here now what we need to do is we need to move it to the left by minus 32 pixels and 32 pixels because we have a padding of 8 on the x-axis and in tail end a padding of 8 is 32 pixels so here let me bring it to the 8 by minus 32 pixels let me see you can see that now it's it's there looking quite nice right now what we need to do is uh you know what this needs to move downwards just a bit let me see how it looks on mobile let's see how it looks on mobile here yeah, it needs to move downwards just a bit so what i'm going to say is bring it to the minus bottom of let me say about 20 pixels hmm that means that i need to add the margin at the top of this h2 so let me go ahead and find this h2 so that we can add the top margin oh wait it was in my should be in my tabs and so the h2 is this one so let me go ahead and say, let me say margin on the top should be 16 and then margin on the bottom should be 8. How does that look? Um, is this going to refresh? What? Okay, my computer started doing what it does. <laughs> so let's just give it a bit more time. And then as we give it time, then let's go ahead and continue moving this downwards. Because I need I need um I need it to move down as just a bit. So let me see about hundred pixels. How much is that? Oh, of course it won't compile. Oh my goodness. Okay, force reload. Okay, so there we go. So it moves downwards by a hundred pixels. But then see how like I'm now seeing that the background this background blue is a bit too big. It's a bit too big because I don't want to increase the margin uh from this header to this image i don't want to increase it so we are going to make this smaller so reduce this to about 250 pixels okay and then now move it upwards to about let's say let me see how minus 50 looks like should be about here yeah minus 50 does look okay actually even on mobile and so now what we're going to do therefore is this 
we are going to scale this up because when you reach around here you noted that now like the minus left of 32 pixels isn't all that nice right because now we have begun to apply a max width so right here the max width is applied and then now it doesn't go all the way to the end so we are going to fix that and then on larger screens as well we are going to increase its height back to 300 pixels so that it is the same height as this and you know what by the way even this height on mobile is a bit too big so for this bg right here we're going to reduce the height to 250 so that it's the same height as the one on the bottom to keep everything uniform and then now let's go ahead inside here inside our media query and we're going to say that for the class of bg and for the class of bg left we want the height to increase to 300 pixels so for both of these so now what will happen is when you increase this to past 1024 pixels then now you notice that the height is now bigger and then now what i want to do i want to access this class of bg left and move it to the left even more so i'm going to say for the class of bg left then i want it to move it to the left by minus 40 percent because that is what i had on the top one we moved it to the right by minus 40 percent and it is on the edge properly so even this one just minus 40 percent the same logic is going to apply and we're going to have this now there is a problem because i'm realizing the width of this is just a bit bigger than this and why is that why did i place the width here 100 percent and the width here is 120 that's why so i'm going to do this i'm going to say for the, for the bg left here i'm going to set the width width to 120 percent and that should increase it there we go so that now we can make this full screen and you can see that now it goes to the edge properly and even this one goes to the to the edge properly now what i want to fix next is this horizontal scrolling the horizontal scrolling that we have here is because of this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back into the top class of bg the first declaration and i'm going to move this to the left by minus 32 pixels and the reason i've chosen minus 32 pixels here is because we have applied a padding on the section of eight and a padding of eight in Tailwind CSS is 32 pixels. So if I move it to the left, to the right, sorry, by minus 32 pixels, then it means it's going to be on the proper edge. And then now I need to reduce this width back to 100% so that this doesn't go all the way to the end. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a media query so that on a screen such as this one right around here, then now we're going to move it to the right by minus 40%. And then the width is going to be 120 so I think let's go above this for the class of BG we're going to say move it to the right by minus 40% let's see there we go and then set the width here to 120% and it should be there and there we go so that is the that is how it was looking originally and it is looking nice and so upon reaching there then that is going to be the end of the first video and then in the next video we are going to continue with the download the extension section and then we're going to do everything all the way up to the footer okay so thank you guys for watching and if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already and i will see you in the next video bye bye Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already and ring the notification bell so that you're always going to be notified of when I upload a new video.